Good news, though, over on the Capitol steps as we speak. Uh, Admiral Joe Sestak out on the street. Uh, and really amazing event, uh, which is why we're live with Joe on the Capitol steps. Joe, thanks for taking time for us. Rick, it's good to be with you. It's Sunday today. So what do you? So while our Republican friends and our po political class is in New York City, uh, smoking cigars, eating steaks, listening to Donald Trump, what are you doing? We're standing here on the Capitol steps, right here in Harrisburg. We arrived a few hours ago. We unloaded pallets, large pallets full of clothing for people because the state budget isn't being passed, and people in the shelters are not getting it. Domestic shelters, homeless shelters. We have school supplies here, $2 billion in federal funds that are supposed to go to children in their schools. Pre-K, Head Start is tied up because the state government, without a budget, isn't allowed to pass, they say, the $2 billion down to kids. Look, this is, this is outrageous. I mean, how can you go to the Waldorf Astoria? I don't care what kind of elected official you are, federal or whether you are a state. People of the Commonwealth are hurting. And then to travel up to the Gotham City in New York, and uh, to have a party, as you say, as I walked across this state, it isn't about party, it isn't about sight, it's about people. And besides that, it's not about partying. They should be here taking care of the people and getting the budget passed. Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, you didn't get to go outside and play until you, cause you got, your, got your homework done. Uh, they, they basically <laughs> chucked the homework and, uh, I guess, party time. And, and look, I, I guess priorities are important, and I think they've shown theirs. I think they should be locked in a room until everything's done. Look, people are hurt in domestic abuse shelter that I went to for an event about two months ago. Said, how's it happen? How's it coming along for the funding? Said, look, we're starting to hurt. We basically have used all our reserves up. We're waiting for the state budget to be passed. We can't get abused women into some transitional housing so that they're safe and not off the street after being abused by their partner. It's shocking. It's such a disappointment. Look, when I was out there operating with the Marines, as you well know, you know, you operate with them. And they're out in the field, and when they stop and uh, get some rations ready to go, the officers eat last. Those that do everything, those enlisted, they were the ones that the officers made sure they never left the field and they never ate first. They were the last to make sure you took care of people first. I wish they'd learn that type of accountability here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And, you know, you look at this, and I remember, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Susan Speaker, having uh, cookie you know, cookie sales to fund education. I remember bake sales to get armor for our soldiers in, in, in battle. And all of these, 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 these things going on where our elected leaders have failed us. And this is another example of this. You, as you've pointed out, there's billions of dollars sitting there that could be funding our education, and yet it's it's sitting there while school districts are borrowing money and eventually paying interest on that money uh, because these guys can't seem to say yes. And this, to me, Joe, looks like uh, the, uh, basically a temper tantrum by a handful or at least one. I look at Mike Terzai as that guy. You know, this, in my mind, is when you step back and think about it, all people are going up to New York City to do fundraisers tonight. They are to, so that they can stay in their job and have the money to argue that they're doing something. In the military, it's about results. The captain of a ship is relieved for cause, not because of good intentions or telling the troops they want to do something. Relieved for cause if that ship goes to ground or the crew comes to harm because we're about results. Despite any intentions, it's about results. But to your point, yeah, you have individuals, like you said, or others, and there are others on both sides that we have to come together in a principal compromise and get this thing done. And I think everyone, every type of official, should be here in the Commonwealth with people until it's done. I'm with you. You know, I, to be honest, I really thought just in radical self-interest that they would have passed the budget just to avoid this optic of going smoking the big cigars, eating the steaks and drinking the booze there at the Waldorf Astoria. But even I, 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 that wasn't even enticing enough to get them to do their job. I think you're absolutely right. But how many have I given the optic to this? I mean, Rick, you are. But where's the rest of the media also? I mean, there should be just a television camera right now today focused on the state capitol and watching no one coming in or out and the lights off, so to speak. We have a role to play, and I think that is to make sure people hold up a mirror and say, we're better than this, and we're not better than this right now with our elected officials up there in New York City and not down here with us. Right. So tell me some of the, the people that you've met today as, uh, as some of those in need have come 
uh, and to, to get uh, food and clothing and blankets as you're passing out there. Uh, you know, as they went through and everything just about 15 minutes ago went, the very last thing, I was shocked. I thought we had tons of stuff. I'd watch him scoop it up and just hold on to it. The line was so long, but here's the one that broke my heart. A woman who arrived early and actually has done helping others into stuff, you know, but, but she said to me after everything was done and I gave her my card and I said, Lord willing, if I'm ever the senator, this is my direct email. Let me know. And she said, look, all I want is a Christmas tree. All I want is a Christmas tree, Rick. God. And we're, we have people who want to represent people up in New York City, the Waldorf Astoria, fundraising, partying today, and she just wants a Christmas tree. And, you know, you hear those stories of, of the, the wants and the needs of people are fairly meager. And we as a society uh, with really a, a very obstructionist government almost now, uh, really standing in the way and really not doing the work of we the people. Uh, they're doing the work of some people, just not those folks uh, that you've met today on the Capitol steps. They're not. Look, Constitution is pretty clear. We know what our soul is. We the people. That's what it is. It made it very basic. And we're all in here in a common wealth. We're in it together. Democracy is terrific for the debate of ideas. But at the end of the day, coming together in a common wealth, and I would say, Staying here in the Commonwealth to do it is what it's all about. You know, yep. People matter. You know as well as I do, Rick. You go out there in the military. It isn't the machines of war. It's the people. And if we're not educating them, if we're not giving them the opportunity to be healthy, that's why only about 28% of youth that graduate from high school qualify for the military today. We're not doing our job. And this today, with this empty state house, with the federal government having kicked down the road for five days to shut down a federal government so they could get out of all out of for the weekend just shows that yeah the system the establishment has lost it that's they don't understand what it's about not them people that's nuts you're listening to the rick smith show we're here with admiral joe sustak you can check out his website joe as you know he is running for senate uh here in pennsylvania on the democratic side uh joe the website but you, know, you hit an interesting point there uh that i, I think needs to highlight and we got a five-day budget uh on the federal level so that we don't shut the government down on a friday night at midnight uh, so that they can, you know, do whatever, party, whatever they're going to do, uh, and just kick it you know, just down the road. And I think what we see on the federal level is what has trickled down here to Pennsylvania and other places. So how do you begin to change that culture, Joe? I mean, what, if the people of Pennsylvania send you to uh, to the U.S. Senate, you know, how, how do we change that? You do it by, first of all, doing exactly what you just said, changing the people. <laughs> I mean, that's really it. I watched it on a ship all the time. You get a good chief petty officer and you get a good XO and you get a good captain and all of a sudden everybody starts standing up to it. And then what you do it is you have people actually willing to lose their job over doing what's right. You know, sometimes that means upsetting the establishment. Maybe the establishment says, hey, hey, don't rock the boat. We all want to go up there to New York City, to the Waldorf. Just, just don't rock the boat. I, there should be a line of officials across the state capitol right now Everyone should be here. Anyone buying for office or in office saying this is wrong and I stand for people. You know, that's why I'm worried about Donald Trump. I mean, I, I, it sounds to me that people would, would think that this man could be a commander in chief. But here's the issue. They feel he's yelling out there for them. Well, you know what? Where's the people yelling against the establishment that accepts shutting down the state budget for five months and a federal official's where they're willing to pass a five-day bill so they can get out for the weekend and then go to New York. I think it's inexcusable. It is inexcusable. So, you know, in, in going to the – because Trump was in New York today uh, speaking to the Pennsylvania Republican Party and looking at – and I think you're right. I think, you know, people view him as the guy who's out there, you know, t being the guy in the good fight. And isn't this where I think the Democrats have kind of lost their backbone? Yes, uh, they, that is exactly right. I'm sorry, Rick. I cut you in. Oh. No, go ahead. I mean, I, this is where they've lost their backbone. People want somebody who's going to stand up for them, who's going to who's going to fight the good fight. Rick, it's exactly right. Look, I'm far from perfect, but that's why I walked across the state, despite the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee hating the idea, thinking it was crazy. But I knew I had to show people I walked in their shoes, and it wasn't about to get the establishment support. Never been it, isn't that I? went down and didn't want to meet with them, I'd be with a tea party if it would help help me help people. But the issue is you don't upset or spill any gravy on the establishment train or you'll get kicked off. And that, I think, is what 
arms people. No, we need people down there that are willing to say, understand establishment, but it isn't working. It is not working. Not when I'm standing in a city where everyone's gone, who's elected officials, and they're leaving to get behind a city that should not be in the, in the situation it is in its schools and everywhere else. Uh, Joe, I give you nothing but the utmost credit in uh, being out there and, and walking the streets and meeting people in their in their backyards and in their towns uh, and here coming here to Harrisburg and, and helping folks in need here. Good on you. I appreciate it. In the future, for all. Thank you, Steve. You look, you have here in Pennsylvania a great Commonwealth Day. Thanks so much, Joe Sestak. JoeSestak.com, the website, if you want to take a look at it. Uh, Joe's in Harrisburg on the steps. Uh, you can probably still catch him if you get over there. Let's take a quick break. Right back. Stick around. Listen to the Rick Smith Show.